In this video, we will introduce shear stress for built-up members. First off, what are built-up members? As the name implies, built-up members are built up from different components. However, when the components are prevented from sliding relative to one another, shear stress is transferred between the components and the member functions as a composite shape. So let's illustrate this with an example. In this example, three identical boards are stacked to form a beam. In the first case, the boards are not bonded together. And we see that if this beam is loaded with a point load P and midspan, we're going to get slip at the ends. So because the boards are not bonded together, the boards do not act together as a composite. Rather, they act independently, and each supports a third of the applied load. So in case one, the boards do not act as a composite. We can compare this to the second case. Here, the boards are bonded together. So since they are bonded together, the shear stresses are transferred between the boards. When this beam is loaded with the same point load P at midspan, the three boards act together as one large rectangular section with a total height of 3H, H being the height of one board. And we can notice that there is no slip at the ends because the three boards are acting as a single beam. So now we can move on to compare the effects or benefits of bonding the boards together as a composite. We can do this by comparing maximum bending stress and deflections for the two cases. And to quickly define some variables, B is the width of the board, and L is the beam span between supports. And just to refresh our memory, we can write maximum moment for a point load at the mid-span of a singly supported beam as PL over 4. And we can get that from a bending moment diagram or doing the method of sections. And recalling the flexure formula, we have sigma max, the maximum bending stress, is equal to the maximum bending moment times C over I, the moment of inertia of the beam. And our equation for the maximum deflection, which will occur at mid-span, is PL cubed over 48 EI. So let's move on and compare the maximum bending stress and the maximum deflection at midspan for these two cases. So in case one, the load is equally shared by three boards. So this means that each board deflects the same amount. So we can now write the maximum moment, which is PL over 4, but P for each board is actually a third of the total point load. L is the span of the beam, and that's divided by 4. So that simplifies to PL over 12, and this is per board. And writing sigma max, that's M max, so PL over 12, times C over I, where C is equal to H over 2, because we're looking at each board independently. So this is H for a board. So H over 2 is from the neutral axis of each board to its outer fiber. And the moment of inertia of a single board is 1 over 12 base height cubed. So substituting that into the sigma max equation, we have PL over 12. Our C is H over 2. And I is in the denominator, so we get 12 over BH cubed. And this simplifies to 1 over 2 PL over BH squared. Finally, we can calculate 
delta max at the midspan, and that's P over 3, L cubed over 48, E, and I again is in the denominator, so we have 12 over BH cubed, and this simplifies to 1 over 12 PL cubed over EBH cubed. So now we can go ahead and draw the bending stress distribution over the beam section. So we want to note that each board has its own linear stress distribution. So drawing that here, we have an individual stress distribution over each of the boards. Sigma max 1. And in comparison, we have case 2, where the boards act together as a composite section. And this is because they are, the boards are bonded to each other. So we have a composite rectangular section with a height of 3 times the height of an individual board, because this is the height of one board. And then we can, again, write the maximum moment, stress, and deflection. So M max is equal to PL over 4. And this time, P is just P because the three boards act together as one beam. So the three boards experience P together as opposed to separately. Sigma max is equal to M max, PL over 4, times C over I. And this time, C is half of the total height, which is 3h, again, because the boards are acting together. This is 3 over 2h. And our moment of inertia is 1 over 12 base, and the height is 3h cubed, which simplifies to 27bh cubed over 12. So substituting that back into our bending stress equation, PL over 4, C is 3H over 2, and I is again in the denominator. And this simplifies to 1 over 6 PL B H squared. And this is actually equal to 1 third of the sigma max of case 1. Finally, delta max is equal to PL cubed over 48E, and again, I is in the denominator, and this simplifies to 1 over 108 PL cubed over EBH cubed, and this actually equals to a ninth of the maximum deflection of case 1. And so again, we can draw the bending stress distribution for the second case. And it's important to note that here, there is only one distribution over all three boards. And this is because the three boards are acting together as a composite section, and the shear is transferred between the boards. So the discontinuities from the first case are actually eliminated. So drawing that here, the linear stress distribution is over the entire height of the three boards. And sigma max, in the second case, is actually only a third of the sigma max of the first case. So we can see from the calculation that we just did that both maximum stress and maximum deflection and midspan for the composite section are less than for the non-composite section. And this is for the same beam configuration. The maximum bending stress, you see, was reduced by three times, and the maximum deflection was reduced 
by nine times. And this is simply because the boards are bonded together and they act as a built-up section, so the shear stress is transferred between the boards. So we can say that here, case two, or the built-up member, results in a more efficient use of the boards as it results in lower stresses and smaller deflections.